Winners don't lose. Halls of Disrepair. Oh, this is awesome. As you venture deeper into the asylum, you see that the inside is every bit as bad as the outside. Gone is any attempt to uphold sanitary hospital aesthetics. With peeling paint, cracked floors, and exposed conduit, the pretense of, medical, of mental care is shattered. In this modern era, Mercy Mental Hospital is a throwback to the barbaric asylums of old. Prisons and torture chambers rather than places of healing. It's clear that Dr. Holmes is spending his money on something other than this facility. You continue on. Holmes can only run so far. This is great. I'm just loving this. Enjoying this so much. Stay back. Who opened the cells? They'll kill us all. Uh-oh. Crap. That's not good. Everybody here is going to be a problem, aren't they? Patients, guards, nobody is going to want to help me. And of course it was Dr. Holmes who opened the cells. Holy crap. Why did I pay for you guys? At least she can hit people. Oh, we're all bunched up for a grenade. Uh, just like that. And meat hook. That looks like a crowbar, actually. Well, let's go ahead and heal myself again since I took 12 damage and I kind of need to survive this. The intercom begins speaking as soon as you approach. Holmes must be watching from somewhere. You don't understand, do you? This is a place for broken things, but only by further breaking them can they be remade. And so, we must break you. Oh, Holmes. I can assure you somebody will be broken by the end of this. Uh oh. Violent patient line of sight blocked. Neither of you have any sort of an overwatch. Good. Just what I was hoping for. Oh. Primeval. That's pretty cool. I should get a better look at it. Can't rotate the screen in this, unfortunately. I mean, it saves a heck of a lot of time in uh, in regards to world building and stuff like that. If you don't have to create a 360 of all of the different items, uh, XCOM, of course, you were able to uh, to rotate, and that was incredibly helpful in some situations. I think it also gives the, the programmers more. Uh, or rather the game, the level makers, there's a good name for them. Uh, it gives them more options for uh, what you want it to really look like. Uh, what you want the different levels to look like, how, you know, how you want people to approach uh, different places. So for a game where, you know, the maps are fairly random, it seems, it does make a lot of sense for them to, uh, to create the 360 sort of thing. Uh, whereas in games like this, where it's very linear, and once you're done with a map, you're probably not going to see it again. At least not that iteration of it. Um, but in, uh, you know, so both of them have their, uh, have their advantages. Super helpful having him. <laughs> having that primeval kind of taking, uh, taking some of the brunt. Find some cover. That's not the good doctor, is it? Give her a gun. An ex surgeon. Why an ex surgeon? Sorry, buddy. I take no pleasure in killing the mentally ill. Oh, shoot. Come on. Who gave her a grenade? Oh, here's a dangerous patient. Let's make sure to carry around fully loaded guns and grenades around them. Because nothing could possibly go wrong if we do. Oh. What is going on? Because I'm wondering now, since I'm, a, since I'm, you know, approaching the, uh, 
whatchamacallit. Now that I'm approaching the uh, the Emerald City Ripper, I'm wondering if there's more to it than, uh, than just him. If maybe Surgical Cart contains a gate key. I'm wondering about the possibility that maybe uh, the demon, which I'm still only assuming exists, uh, is actually a, a major player here, and the Emerald City Ripper is just one of his... Um, smell of rotting flesh is immense. This appears to be from multiple metahumans. I'm wondering if... if the demon has a, a bigger role to play in all of this than I realized. And if the Emerald City Ripper is just one of his servants. From another intercom, Dr. Holmes continues. Someone once told me that I was a broken thing, but he also said I could remake myself. He wanted to break me down so I could put myself back together again. And I did, but only after I broke him. Yep, I could remake you as well. What wonderfully twisted thoughts must churn in a mind such as yours. But I'm more inclined to use you for parts. Parts for what? Explain this to me, friend. I really want to know what's going on in his head. Jeez, that scared me. There we go. Okay, good. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like there's nothing in there. And this is probably going to be another way out. Another door for us to cross. Another threshold for us to de-thresh. Unflesh. Re-thresh. Oh, nope. But that looks beautiful. Ooh, doggy, what a ley line. So as you can see, now that I'm on this ley line, all of my magic, not only is it more powerful, but this one, I can actually use twice in a row. Um, like twice this turn. It's got a reboot time of zero. This one's got a reboot time of only two now, only two, only one. Everything's gone down. Everything's a lot easier to use. Because of the magical power. Minus five. Ooh, man. That is nuts. Is it ever more powerful? Holy cow. Blah, blah. Okay, we got something to look at over here. And then this probably maybe is a way out to the next area? Uh, by all means, come. You have proven yourself a truly fine specimen. I can think of for a hundred uses of one such as you. Trivid player holds a collection of personal diaries. Some of the video files are missing. Insert and playback try video number one. Got some cutout chips in last week. Tried them out on the patients with violent flashbacks, hoping it would at least mellow some of them out. It was like a night and day. Once the chips were installed, all their psychotic break triggers were blocked. Miss Yuskin has gone four days without attacking the staff or herself. That's promising. I was walking to the organ grinders downtown, and there was some kind of event happening at Mega Media. They had a puppet from the Maria Mercu Mercurials label with a Persona Fix chip installed, making her an exact doppelganger. They were just using her to hawk some SimSense re-release of the Mercurial live show. But it gave me an idea. The cutouts, the body modifications, and my healthy supply of patience. I'm perfectly set up to be a Banaraku fixer. I can find a supplier of uh, Persona Fix chips. I can sell full service Banaraku, even program the behavior trees. Found a buyer for the first Banraku. What the heck is a Banraku? The man in the Barons offered me 200 or 20,000 yen for the female troll I've been modifying. He likes them big, he says. That all that's left is to arrange delivery. 
He says he can put me in touch with some more buyers if I can accommodate special orders. These morons' lives are already over anyways. The least I could do is line my pockets. Banraku, also known as Ningyo Joruri, is a former traditional Japanese puppet theater founded in Osaka in 1684. So he's making living puppets essentially out of these people. Disturbing. I don't know what you would ever use them for. Can I not pop in the uh, the trivit that I found earlier? The uh, the one that was found in the uh, uh, not in an office in the uh, in the place where Buddy's body was found. Josie Josiah's uh, body was found. All right, let's go. Oh, okay. Now we are exiting from the scene. All right. Well, I think that's where we're gonna call it for today, guys. Next time, I believe. Hmm, I'm not actually sure when this is exactly going to come out. But next time, we will be taking on Dr. Holmes himself. So until then, make sure to like and subscribe, and be excellent to one another.